Hey guys, it's Greg with Tales from the Pythian. Hope you guys are doing all right today. Uh, we're back for our second week of Curse of Strahd, building out uh, building out Curse of Strahd as a world inside of Foundry VTT, uh, using some uh, cool assets like Benio's Battle Maps, Pyram King's Legends of Barovia, um, you know these all these sorts of things. And last week we started out kind of building it all and kind of building our base up. And I wanted to just uh, bring us all up to speed with where we got to, and then I'm gonna rewind us just a little bit and take care of a couple things that I mentioned in the video, but wasn't went one very clear about, and two, technically um, loaded in the system agnostic version of Pyram King's uh, Gates of Barovia uh, as opposed to the the correct one. Um, I also want to touch back on the D and D Beyond importer where we imported what we needed and that was great which was the curse of strahd rules as written however um i did touch on um one of the settings in there for automation i said we'd come back to it and we didn't and honestly there's you can go back to it but it, it might be better to do it at the beginning you know whether you do it first or second it's kind of i don't know probably up for debate but in the spirit of getting it all done and being done with it we're gonna do it from the beginning so what do we actually have that works? So we have the Benio stuff imported. As you see, we have the landing page and this all works and it's great. We have all of the actors from um, Pyram stuff because uh, we did bring that in. I brought it in correctly while you guys weren't here. Um, we have the Ben's maps. We don't have any items yet. We have the journal entries uh, that go along with Ben's maps. We have the journal entries for Pyram King's Legends of Barovia, and we brought in Dragna Carta's Reloaded into our journal using a little piece of code I borrowed from another creator out there. I believe I put that information in the previous video. Uh, we're gonna get the regular rules as written roll tables back momentarily, but we have the ones that Pyram created, right? No roll tables, and then of course we just have uh, some sound that came with both Pyram Kings Legends of Barovia as well as uh, Benios Battle Maps. So let's get started on what we're going to do. So firstly, <clears throat> firstly, uh, let's go ahead and look at the D and D Beyond Muncher, okay, or D and D Beyond Importer. So when you have this module, I think I showed this last time. When you have this module installed. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get this button in your compendiums area, okay? And I very briefly blazed past this guy right here. Use automation effects from Chris's pre-made module. So I think I mentioned before that I like to run a very highly automated and animated game. And that's where we kind of start is here. So to kind of break this down and keep it as simple as possible, I'm gonna pull my modules list open and we're just going to look at the active modules that we have currently, right? So last week we imported Venios module and all of its dependencies plus Curse of Strahd Gates of Barovia and the D&D Beyond Importer, okay? So the Benios dependencies were FX Master, Scene Packer, Lib Wrapper, Lock View, Monk's Active Tiles, Molinet Core, Molinet Scenes Module, multi-level tokens, point of interest teleporter, and token magic effects. Beyond that, for just ease of using things, I added monk scene navigation, which allows me to navigate scenes much faster and keep them organized a little bit better. Um, we brought in the D&D Beyond Importer, which is what we're gonna address right now, along with um, bringing the adventure Curse of Strata in from D&D Beyond, which we, we did last week. We're just gonna do it again this week. And then the curse of, like I said, the curse of Strahd Gates Barovia. All right, so that gives us 14 active modules. Now here's something cool. We don't need the curse of Strahd Gates of Barovia anymore. We can we can go ahead and unclick that. We, we brought that adventure in. It's where we need it to be. So we don't need the module attached so we can be done with that. To add the automation in, to go to add Chris's in, Chris's pre-mades, we're going to switch over to my inactive module list and we'll find Chris. Chris is pre made right here. And when we select it, we're going to get a list of additional dependencies. So one thing you'll notice with some of these modules is that they do have dependencies to run, which is great. That means that the community of mod module developers out there is actively working together and um, collaborating to 
make these things either work together or to develop things that allow people that make modules to develop them easier to give us more cool toys to play with, right? So we're going to kind of look at this uh, at a 30,000 foot view real quick. So it says, use automation effects from Chris's pre-made module. It requires the module and the module requires these modules. So we'll just say yes. But before we say yes, I would like to do what I did last week and kind of just go through and talk a little bit about what they are. Again, not a coder. And um, this is going to be from a very high level of understanding. OK, MIDI QOL provides combat automation with almost all features being optional. And there are a ton. OK, there are a ton. The cool thing about Chris's pre-mades is that he's got a button that will set the settings um, or help you set settings in there. And on their Discord channel, they have information that will also guide you down the path of, of the settings. Uh, but we'll we'll talk about that. I don't want you to get hung up on that. You can pretty much put these in out of the box and you're probably going to get 95 percent functionality um, with how this works. Right. I definitely don't want it to be intimidating as well. If you are not interested in a high level of automation or animation, then you don't have to do this. This is completely not necessary to run this game. OK. All right. So that's MIDI. So next on the list is Socketlib. Uh, this says that it is a library for simplifying working with foundry sockets. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming that that is some type of a code lingo. And again, this is one of those deals that uh, makes things easy for people to develop modules. It even says here, you only need to install it if one of the modules you use listed as a dependency, which is the case. OK, so that's Socketlib. <clears throat> so we have a lot of pollen in the air in North Carolina here suddenly. But uh, so pardon me. Um, dynamic active effects using active effects affectionately called DAE. It adds features to core active effects, so kind of almost still like a little background uh, level module. It transfers effects between linked items. Um, it gives you the ability to reference actor information. Um, it gives you the ability, and this is if you're a coder again, uh, an extended set of custom fields, you know, etc. What's happening for us is that Chris's pre-mades is using this to do all of that cool stuff so we don't have to. Right. So dynamic active effects. Defred's convenient effects. It's found a VTT module that adds easy to use toggleable active effects for common use cases in the DD 5e system. Now, I use this outside of any of these modules as it, as it being a dependency. It really is very handy. Uh, warp gates. So warp gates, a system agnostic library module that provides API functions to make pro programmatically spawning tokens and modifying those tokens easier for both players and game masters. Current features are spawn, mutate, crosshairs, events, and dialogues. The effect macro. Effect macro is a module that allows users to embed macros directly into effects. These macros are then called automatically when the appropriate trigger happens. The options are, and it goes through a tremendous list of them. And I'll link all of these down in the bottom at the end, and you can explore them to your heart's content. I just feel like it's a it's good to have at least an understanding of what are what are all of these things that you're adding into your module so that you know maybe where to look should you have any problems though honestly i rarely have any problems uh, so template macro is going to be similar to effect macro except it does that inside of um, templates so you know circle square cone fine um sequencer uh, sequencer is a powerful module that lets you play visual effects in your scenes, attaching them to tokens or other elements, animating them quickly and easily, removing them, play sounds for all the, all or specific players, run macros one after another in a controlled way, and so much more. And um, Sequencer is one of those that is so amazing. I barely can scratch the surface of its use. I recently found a, um, a user over on Discord and on YouTube uh, on Discord he goes by Eskimo. That might be what he goes by on YouTube as well, but I'll link both of those down below. He does very, very good tutorials on Sequencer that are very simple to understand and straightforward. Um, he also has a library of um, free macros that you can that you can use. Token Attacher. Uh, this allows you to attach 
anything to tokens. You can attach other tokens to tokens. You can attach tiles to tokens. It's it's super useful. Um, I've used this one for a long time again outside of these, and it's it's fantastic. Um, build a bonus. So build a bonus uh, is a module for the Foundry D and D five E system. So again, we're specific here. Uh, after installing this module, you can find build a bonus application in any actor item or effects header, and it gives you the ability to apply a bonus to any attack roll, damage roll, saving throw, DC, etc. Um, and Chris's uses that to apply bonuses to certain effects that it does, which is why it's a dependency. Automated animations. Again, I've been using this one for a long time. I love it. It's easy to use if you wanted just to use it. It's name driven. There's so many folks out there that have so many um, like little files that you can plug into it that already have sound set up with certain things and all, all of this kind of thing. It's really, really cool. Um, but automated animation provides a user interface for compiling sequencer module to be automatically played in your game system based on name recognition through the global automatic recognition menu. Sounds way more complicated than it is. Um, it's super easy uh, thanks to that user interface and super fun. Um, and then uh, Time's Up. So this is an add-on module for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Um, and this module is a temporary solution to active effects being removed from actors as time passes and they expire. So it allows time to be applied to those active effects, to spell durations, to all of these things. And, um, and it does the deed, right? So I'm going to hit the yes button and all of those modules are going to get checked. Chris's pre-made should get added and let's hit save module. And we're going to watch this thing blink out for a moment for us and uh, reload up. Should only take just a second and we're going to be back in and then we're going to go right back over into our manage modules going to hit our active modules and very quickly you see now we've gone up to 26 modules but the important thing to remember is a lot of these are support uh, for the two big ones that we really have going on right now right the two big ones that are taking all of these support modules are benios and chris's premades so that being said, let's come back to the D&D &D Beyond Muncher and let's look at what changes we have. Okay, so now our box is able to be toggled. Use automation effects from Chris's pre-made module. The requirement is there, good to go. So these settings, if you wanna you know, pause or screenshot these, these are just the ones that I run with. They seem to work very well for me um, as it relates to pulling things from D&D &D Beyond. So adventures uh characters and what their um their icons look like and he gives a very good description of what you're actually doing here so let's check out the spells tab create automation effects for spells so this is very similar to what we had in the settings but now we're going to get a little bit more specific these effects automate a lot of common spells but do not require the use of a number of external modules including uh, but do require the use of a number of external modules, including MIDI QOL, which potentially introduces a much higher level of automation and complexity above the base foundry system. It's a true statement, but these guys make it easy for us. These require the following modules. So we already have DAE. We already have MIDI. We already have times up and convenient effects. Um, we also already have token magic effects and automated animations. So to, to use the spell automation, and these are just recommended, so you don't have to have these, but to use them, it's saying, um, we recommend that you also add active auras and active token effects. So we're gonna add both of those right now, active auras and active token effects. And we're gonna go ahead and check that box just so it's checked when we come back to it. So we go to items, add automation effects to equipment. Yep, done, pretty easy. All right, monsters. Same thing. Generate automation effects that use MIDI qual and monster attack features. These are a highly auto this is for a highly highly automated game, etc. 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 And we already have the requirements installed. So we can check that and be good to go, right? So let's hit the save module. Again, it's gonna reload, it's gonna add those other two. We're gonna be up to say 20, what is it, 28 modules. And don't don't be afraid of the modules, right? Um, especially as we're kind of working through getting getting set up and understanding why we have them, 
and um, or at least understanding what other modules are using them so that you know to get what we're looking for uh, or just to get those two modules to work we need them as support structure for them right so back into the manage modules we've got our active modules everything looks great there everything remained checked in here all right cool so now we're going to go ahead and pull that um we're going to pull that adventure in again so let's find it curse of strad um i have changed the button configuration so what we're going to do just a couple things different we're going to import all the monsters in the adventure to the world and this is going to prevent me from having to go and pull those in from D, &D beyond specifically just save me a little time I'm going to go ahead and have it link the journals to the world actors because I'm not going to pull it into a compendium this time. I'm just going to pull, pull it into the world and let that link occur. That'll help me organize and then I can drop things into compendiums should I want to. And then we're going to add journals and tables to the compendiums so that as as I need or don't need chapters, I can you know get rid of them. Like I will need Death House one time, right? So when Death House is gone, I can delete it from from my journal panel, but I'll still have it should I ever have to reference it or if I want to run the adventure again in the compendiums and I'm, I'm good, good to go. So let's import the adventure to the world and it should only take a second. Again, we're going to get this dialogue box. We're going to say we don't want any of these, um, any of the scenes. And there you have it. So <clears throat> let's start at the front scenes. We didn't bring any in. All these folders are empty, so we're just going to delete it. Tokens. Here we go. We got them all. So now we have the overall rules as written tokens. We have the specific Pyram King Gates of Barovia tokens. And then we have the overall game Benios Battle Maps tokens organized. So we can do with this what we want to do with this when we're ready. And by scene and area and chapter of the module as we work through it. Items we're not going to have for a little while yet. Um, the journals so there we go there's the whole entire curse of strahd from the rules was written book the other ones that we looked at at the beginning of the um of the video here and then here's the roll tables that we got added back in we shouldn't have any additional music and there we go so now that being said while we're talking about the dnd beyond importer we're doing all these cool things with the automation and that's spectacular but our characters are going to have spells that are not in curse of strahd they're in the player's handbook or tasha's cauldron of everything or whatever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my spells tab and just with these two boxes checked i'm going to tell it to munch the spells and what it's going to do is it's looking at my particular uh, D, D beyond account it's going to create and update uh, 503 spell items in a compendium for me and it's done that fast and if i go over here and i find that compendium see spells they're all listed by school and here they are right ready to rock and roll so that's totally good to go so we can close that out so now we're going to go to items i'm going to also munch these items you can see it's going to do 1,672 items, which is a pretty significant amount, uh, but it's going to pull that all into a compendium. That's important. It's pulling it into the compendium, which keeps it out of the game world. That means we can use it as we need it, and it's not going to drag our system performance down. Okay, so it's probably going to be monsters. But you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to import the monsters. We're going to go over here to tools. What we're going to do under tools is we're going to set magic item prices. This is a new handy feature I didn't know existed until a few days ago, but it's going to go through and based on the tables from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, it is, or Xanathar's Guide rather, it's going to apply a cost to all of our magical items. So if we have a store like say in Valaki where we want to maybe put a uh, magic weapon, we have that base before we do our markup and, and we make things wonderful. All right. So typically, if I was starting an, a game and I wasn't bringing in the modules, monsters like we did with the adventure, I would import all of the monsters. I'm not going to do that in this case because I'm not going to need all of them. If I were to need them, I can check this exact name match and I can type it right in here and then have it go out and search for it and um, grab that specific guy. So anyway. Uh, that's um, that's what we're going to do 
there. Uh, so what's the final use of the D&D Beyond importer? Um, it makes it very easy if you use D&D Beyond to set up a campaign, give your characters the link to the campaign, let them go in there and create a character, and then you can come into Foundry, create the actor. So we'll do a test actor, caps lock, test actor to player character. We have it opened up. And if I hit the edit button here, you'll notice I get a D&D &D Beyond button, right? See that? D&D &D Beyond. So if I click this, this dialog box is going to want a URL. All right. So all I'm doing is I'm going to go into D&D &D Beyond and up at the top in the URL, I'm going to copy the URL and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste it in and you're going to see that this checkbox goes green. And then I'm going to tell it that I only want the updates to it for these ticked boxes, right? So let's do image two, because we're going to say we're bringing this guy in for the first time. And then when we update, it's, this is kind of the same as the dialog box that we had with the regular muncher where we tell it, where do we want the icons to come from for the spell schools or for items or for whatever, right? And that's going to, you know, determine what happens with that. Um, we'll go over here and check this automation tab and we'll just make sure that we are generating the automation effects for spells because if we have them for our monsters and our NPCs, why wouldn't we have them for our characters? So we just make sure all of the automation is set up. You see all the green check boxes. That means all those modules are in play and we don't have to worry about it. So back over here on the import character tab, we can just start the import. It'll go grab the character data scoop it and then boom here we have the character this is uh Aaronis Wolfwalk who is a ranger in my Fandover game and we have him in here ready to go with all of his equipment and his features and his spells his effects and his personal information as well and it's that simple and then you know we can also with this go back into the D&D Beyond and we can update this character back to D&D &D Beyond and choose what we want to go back out um you know so I will so will caution you that custom equipment made in Foundry doesn't necessarily play very nicely with D&D &D Beyond so you might just want to you know consider if you are pushing a character back over if if your player asks you to do so so they can look at it offline or whatever you know you may unless you run your game you know up on um the forge or something um just be be cautious of that um that it could throw you an error cool all right so i think that my friends actually gets us our our base right so now we have everything that we could possibly need going forward and not have to try to um redo things retrospectively as we're building out this game so that being said um that's going to be it for this week's video next week we're actually going to move into gates of barovia and then probably also start in village of barovia uh, and starting to get that prepped so what does that look like when i'm saying that we're going to start getting that prepped we're going to make sure that we have uh npc are uh, the npcs and monster tokens that we might or might not need um, are prepared with uh, top-down tokens and that we have a nice representation of an image for them for their portrait. Uh, we'll talk about another module that displays that character art, which I think is important to kind of give a sense of immersion. Um, and uh, we'll talk about how if the book says X, Y, or Z happens, how do we achieve that? Is it, you know, do we use monks active tile triggers to get what we need do we use a, another module like lock and key we're going to be using a lot of different modules in this build i use a lot of different modules and when i first started doing um game mastering in foundy foundry i found it very difficult to find uh information to help me understand how it functioned i think it was basically bailey wiki and then um encounter library that was it uh and those Bailey Wiki is still a fantastic source. Uh, Encounter Library, I don't think has posted a video in quite some time. Um, but I'd like to try to be another resource for you guys to find, you know, some information on these modules or see them in practical use and not necessarily 
having to go read on a forum or a GitHub or a or Discord channel on on how they work. So anyway, that was a very long winded. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, let me know down at the bottom. If you found the video useful, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Tell me what you want to see, and I will see you in the next one. All right. Peace.